Well, as always, it's a joy to be together and see all these faces from all over. Uh, it's just a remarkable thing. And I really try to listen uh, to, to what the Lord is saying, even as we gather and as we worship. And um, sometimes I've spoken uh, 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 several times, and sometimes I'll send Bob a, a hymn and say, hey, do you think you could work this in? But I felt no, I felt no need to do that at all. You know, I said, well, Lord, just you lead us along. And uh, there are so many themes running through my heart that are fresh, even from just right now. Um, from, from Dave Webster's prayer on into worship, Dave used a phrase called, we're, we're God pleasers. Did anything come to mind as you um, heard that phrase, God pleaser? Anything from scripture come to mind to you? You may speak, uh, I've got to cancel something about confirming my speaking language, so I'm just going to cancel that. Okay, it's out of the without, way. Without faith, it is impossible to please the Lord. Isn't that right? Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And that'll be a theme, I trust, running through what will be uh, kind of the journey we'll go on today. Uh, without faith, it's impossible to please God. And then he went on and prayed. And I, I think he was just capturing the Lord's heart today, Dave. I think you were. Um, just give us great encouragement that we can press on into more of God, pressing on in. And I think you'll hear that theme coming through as well. And then in the hymns, Change from glory to glory. If that isn't pressing on and uh, just God's work in our lives. Uh, Bob, you said probably one of his most popular hymns. I think so. Early on, uh, when I was in Canada uh, in those days with uh, Pete and Sharon, uh, yeah, and, and uh, Fred and Sheila, um, Gene Paisley, who just recently passed, was an elder there in the Stouffville Christian Fellowship, and he was a dairy farmer. And I, I, uh, um, I was on a visitor's visa with my wife and our oldest, well, our first child. She was just one uh, year old then. And uh, I see every morning he'd get up early and get in the truck in this cold winter weather. We were there in January and drive off. And uh, I, I, I learned he was driving off to the dairy farm. And so one day I asked him, I said, hey, Gene, can I, uh, could I help out somehow? I, you know, I can't work here. I'm on a visitor's visa. So uh, he said, well, if you can wake up early, you can come along. And I said, yeah, I'm an early riser. So I got to muck out the stalls because the, I might have told this story, but the Holstein cattle, uh, cows, the milk cows, they just stand in their stall all winter long and are hooked up in the morning. And there's a trough where the offal passes through and somebody gets to muck out the stalls. They have a little paddle thing, but it, it was old and it broke down. So I got to do that. This hymn, Bob, 23, <laughs> love divine, all loves excel. I can't tell you how many times every day I sang that hymn in that barn uh, as we went along. Love, You know, it's just, uh, yeah, it, it's a remarkable thing. Fix in us thy humble dwelling, all thy faithful mercies crown. Yeah, change from glory into glory. So what I'd like um, to do today is just, uh, I get, normally Pete asked me for a title afterwards, you know. <laughs> and uh, today, three, everything comes in threes to me, as you probably know. So three uh, possibilities came. They're all along the same line, but uh, what I'm, I want to uh, uh, just the direction we're going is walking, walking the pilgrim's way. As I was thinking about this, I think the first time I ever spoke, I don't know how long ago that was, a year and a half maybe or so, I, I, I think I asked you all, how does your garden grow? And we talked about fruitfulness and, you know, the word being the seed and that sort of thing. But uh, walking today, walking the pilgrim's way, Another title could be From Beginning to End, and I hope to weave that in a little bit, From Beginning to End. But uh, then I laughed and I said, well, this is the amplified version, <laughs> and it's From the Nethermost Pit to Mount Zion and the City of the Living God, the Heavenly Jerusalem. 
And I want to talk about that because um, just a few days ago in the, in the uh, Psalter, the Psalms, in Coverdale's translation, which I enjoy quite a lot, uh, I came across a word that I'd read many times, or a phrase that I'd read many times, but it never jumped off to me. And I was reading it with a brother uh, down in the southern part of the state. We, we've been doing that for 20 years and, you know, having conversation around uh, the daily Psalms. But the, the phrase was nethermost pit. And the whole uh, verse was, for great is your love toward me. You have delivered me from the nethermost pit. And somehow it just, it just hit both of us, really, the nethermost pit. And that God had delivered me from the nethermost pit. I just saw that in a way. I saw what the nethermost pit that I had been in in those early years of my life. I just saw them in a clarity and... Um, and how about you? Can you think back to the nethermost pit that God has delivered you from, that he reached down and snatched you? He lifted you up? Think about it. Just pause for a minute. Let me just give you a moment. You know, think about it. Uh, what, what was it like? It's good to remember sometimes, not to dwell on these things, but even this morning as I, I was driving from church to home, Thinking about this, the, the Lord showed me again, you know, what that nethermost pit was like, what I was like. And I'll tell you what, I don't. this is the way I have found it. The enemy shoots fiery darts at us to try to awaken and connect with that those ways we were in the nethermost pit, how we were formed in that. And um, guess what? Uh Without faith, it is impossible to please God. And also, uh, how does it go? Uh, the shield, pick up the shield of faith, without which it is impossible to quench the fiery darts of the wicked one. These things come. I think they come. And you might mistake and say, oh, I'm still like this. Well, if you engage with it and respond to that fiery dart, you don't lift up, have that sh shield of faith. Uh, the Lord has some continuing sanctifying work to do in your life for sure. But I think often there's a it, it comes and you can quench that fiery dart. I mean, listen, let me just how it was this morning, guys. I grew up in a family background, an educational background, and an athletic background. I was an elitist through and through. I was at the top of my class. I was the top of a swimmer. I was at a top university. Friends, that, guess what, was the nethermost pit. I was lost until Jesus came and snatched me out of it and set my feet on a solid rock to stay and on a path, a pilgrimage. So, uh, nethermost pit. In the King, King James, it's translated in uh, lowest hell. In the New King James, I think it's the depths of Sheol. But I really like that, ne the nethermost pit, deepest, lowest hell. And God has done that. And he set our feet on a pathway. All right? And so, um, so that's the psalm. For great is your love toward me, you've delivered me from the nethermost pit. Now, where are we heading? That, that's Psalm uh, 86.13, if you want to revisit that and, and even read the context and stuff. And all of these little scripture references I'll give you are well worth, they're little portions to chew on and inwardly digest. But uh, in Hebrews, um, you probably remember it. And, and I know early on in the fellowship days, uh, there was a kind of a, a little, uh, like a little monthly magazine. I think it was um, a little journal. And on the back, it was, it was this, this uh, verse was quoted. And God was speaking a number of things to me, but I kind of scratched my head at first. I said, oh, okay. Well, I kind of get that. But this would be in Hebrews... Um, Let's see, 1222. So if you want to go there, you can, and you may, or I'll just read it as well. Uh, but it was there on the back of this month, I think it was a monthly journal. Do any of you remember that from the early days? 
Yeah. Well, I see yeah. Sharon nodding and I see a few others nodding, but it was this. This is the phrase, but you have come to Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Well, amen. So that's where we're heading. But you have come, not, not, Mount, Zion, not, not Mount Sinai. Uh, if you f flip back, uh, let's, you know, the thing to remember about these great promises and great truths is that um, in eternity, beyond time, the etern in the eternal now, it is done. It is finished. But you have come. And yet, here we are in time, and in my experience, it's work. these great truths and great promises are working themselves out in time as we walk it out, as we go from glory to glory, as we're changed from glory to glory. But this is where we're heading. And uh, let's, let's spend just a little bit of time uh, in, in Hebrews before um, we go to uh, something that... When, when you're pressing on the pilgrim's way, uh, uh, it, it takes endurance. It takes uh, it just takes pressing on. And I think that Dave was in in your prayer as well, pressing on. And and it, it always reminds me of Paul writing in Philippians. So we'll get there. But let's let's just look for a moment. Uh, let's go back. Flip back to uh, Hebrews eleven. I'm just going to dip in a few spots to get the, get the flow of things from these last verses. Of course, the whole uh, Hebrew letter is marvelous, and I have been uh, incredibly enriched, both listening to Ron of late and Di Patterson uh, on their ministry uh, that relates to the New Covenant. And uh, we'll see a few things here, but it, it starts with this litany of faith. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. The shield of faith that quenches every fiery dart of the enemy. Now, I love the King James. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Uh, I think many of us, I know I did early on, It's you, you take that, okay, it's like me saying, uh, well, now let me tell you about this, or now, now, think about this. And I think that's at one level true. But in Christ and in this eternal life we have, it is now faith. It's, it's past, present, and future all tied up in now. It's always now. It's always today in faith as we move on and walk. So now faith. That kind of faith, not, not just doctrine you believe, but now faith, living faith, is the substance of things hoped for. It has substance. It's real. It's as real as the air we breathe that we might live in our natural being. Faith is that which we breathe and live by. The just shall live by faith. We live by faith. And it's now faith. It's the substance, substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. What a, what a wonderful truth that is. So that's Hebrews 11.1. 1. Set that aside and uh, pick it up sometime and, and uh, chew on it for a while. But even going on, uh, so now, Faith, flip on to uh, 11.16. Oops, there it is again. He's talking about different, you know, this litany of, of people of faith and Truly, 15, truly, if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out, they might have had opportunity to return. <laughs> Don't want to look back, folks. But now, the great but now, they're scattered. Uh, certainly some in Hebrews, but all throughout Paul's letters. But now, but now they desire a better country. That is a heavenly 
Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. You've come to Mount Zion and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, prepared for them a city. So 1116, go on a little bit more to the end of 11. So all of this, all the people of faith, in the times past, and then we're told at the very end of 11, this whole litany, all across the board, all sorts of experiences, and then this, and these all, having obtained a good report through faith, received not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. Wherefore, verse 12, wherefore, seeing you are compassed about with so great a cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin that does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Let me just pause there. I had to smile as I was looking at this, and because I love this verse, but I my, I, I was talking about walking the pilgrim's way, right? Walking from beginning to end. And then I, I read this and say, wait, I'm supposed to be running, <laughs> running with patience, the race that is set before us. That word patience is a beautiful word. It's hupomone, it's called. Hupomone. It's a, it's a virtue. It's, it's patient endurance. It's uh, It captures this sense of... Um, in fact, I've written down Barclay. He, he talks about it somewhere. Let me see if I can find it. Hupomone, patient endurance. It is the quality which keeps a man on his feet with his face to the wind. It is the virtue which can transmute the hardest trial into glory because beyond the pain, it sees the goal. Right. The city of the living God. <laughs> and... It's now, and yet it's not now. It's in, in my life, it's working itself out in time, but I embrace it, I love it, and I delight in it. So, and just to continue on, run with patience, and I don't, I would need, uh, I would need the Lord. I would have to run and not be weary, walk and not faint. <laughs> uh, the Lord would have to lift me up on wings as an eagle, but um, run with patience the race that is set before us. What's next? What, what else could it be? Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down to the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. Jump on. I'm going through now 12, 18. Hebrews 12, verse 18. And, you know, and keep in mind, folks, we, you know, this gift of Scripture, it, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's a table spread before us in the presence of our enemies. It's a table replete with uh, portions. It's uh, man does not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the, the mouth of God. It's, it's life to us. And uh, we, we can just, we, we feed on it and, and, and grow in it, right? And um, what do we have here at 18? Well, so my point is, keep feeding on the word <laughs> as we go along. And because we're on this pilgrim way, it takes patient endurance, we're looking unto Jesus. And verse 18, just a reminder, for we have not come, ye are not come unto the mount that might be touched, that burned with fire, nor unto blackness and darkness and tempest, and the sound of a trumpet and the voice of words. Everything at Sinai, the giving of the law, the glory that was there, 
but we're moving on from glory to glory. And you can think of Paul in that Corinthian letter, 2 Corinthians, glory to glory, the glory of Moses, but it was veiled. And it's a much greater glory that we're moving on to. So moving on down a little more, but you're not come to Mount Sinai, but you are come unto Mount Zion, unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and on it goes that, that we've read already. Um, wherefore, jump all, all the way down to, um, no, let, let's just, let me just keep reading this, to the the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are written in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of just men made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of the new covenant, and to the blood of sprinkling that speaks better things than that of Abel. See that you refuse him not that speaketh. For if they escape not and refuse him that spake on earth, much more shall not we escape if we turn away from him that speaketh from heaven. Remember one of the, I think it was the Fanny Crosby hymn we sang, I have heard thy voice. I have heard thy voice. And on she went, uh, hearing the voice. Faith comes by hearing. <laughs> hearing by the word of God. To hear his voice. My sheep hear my voice. And they follow me. And they do not listen to the voice of a stranger. Walking that narrow way to this heavenly city. Whose voice then shook the earth. But now, he's promised, saying, yet once more I shake not the earth only, but also heaven. And this word, yet once more, signifies the removing of those things that are shaken as of things that are made, that those things which cannot be shaken may remain. Wherefore, we receiving a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. Amen. A couple thoughts on that. All of this, this walk along, this being changed from glory to glory, this... Um, there's a sanctifying work that, that is, goes on as we press on and we go through trials and heartache and difficulties as God draws us on, draws us nearer and nearer uh, to him. I find, and I'm thinking back to Ron, you know, I don't know about you guys, uh, all, of, all of you, uh, almost every Sunday are here, so we get just rich, rich ministry to consider and to meditate on and to chew on and really make it your own. Um, Ron, some time ago, talked about the continual burnt offering, the continual burnt sacrifice. And um, boy, I took that to heart. That My life, my walk, my daily walk, my pilgrimage, there can be a continual burnt offering unto him. And any chaff, Lord, that is left in me, would you, would you just consume it? Just consume it, Lord. I offer myself to you. I pour myself out to you, presenting ourselves a living sacrifice unto God there in, in Romans 12, right? And uh, I, when I just recently, the Lord spoke to me and, and reminded me of several words in several places in, in Scripture. Pure, his word is a, a pure word, purified seven times in a fire. I think, you know, the purifying, I think, goes on. In my experience, it, it continues. We're working this out in time. We're there. It's finished. It's done. And yet we're working it out in time. And this sanctifying work. And, and so then I said, Lord, I think you need a lot more than seven times with me. And he reminded me of Peter coming to him and says, Lord, how many times do I need to forgive? Do I have to forgive seven times? And the Lord says, 70 times seven. And I laughed and I said, okay, Lord, I get it. That's about right. <laughs> 70 times seven for me as I walk this pilgrim's way. Um, he is a consuming fire. He consumes the chaff. He consumes the dross. He purifies seven times, 70 times seven, however many times as we press on and we're working out this great salvation in time as we press on. 
So speaking of pressing on, would you turn with me to Philippians for a moment? It'd be Philippians 3. You all probably know this. Early on, I just so, yeah, I can remember, actually, we lived in Chicago by that time, but we were going up to the, um, those kind of camp meetings we had at Salmon Point. You remember? Pete and Sharon and some of you others might. Carolyn Wood, there's Salmon Point on uh, Lake Ontario, and we're driving up. And this would be the early, um, early mid-80s, and just so embracing this word and saying, Lord, make it real in my life more and more. But it's Philippians uh, 3.10. And catch, I'm going to read this, but, but catch a couple phrases that I may know him, that I follow after, and I press on. All right, here we go. I'm, in fact, I'm going to drop up a few uh, earlier verses and then move right in. Verse 8. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ, of Christ Jesus my Lord, for whom I've suffered the loss of all things, and do count them but dung, that I may win Christ. That nethermost pit, folks, I don't know about you, but I, I didn't know it was the nethermost pit. You know, I just living my life. I did not know the Lord. And I'd heard the words since Sunday school, but nothing was alive to me. But oh, to have it all just, it's all done. It's uh, that I may win Christ and be found in him, not having my own righteousness, which is of the law, but that which is true. Here it is again, the faith of Christ the righteousness which is of God by faith. And again, I've just got to pause. I love the old King James. It's the, the, the righteousness, the faith of Christ. It's of Christ. There is an in Christ. Of course, it's, we have faith in Christ, but it's his faith. He's in us. It's the faith of Christ. In Galatians, the Paul's letter there, I think the old King James translators got it right. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life which I now live in the flesh, in this body, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. Oh, hallelujah. Christ in us, the hope of glory, from glory to glory, onward Mount Zion, and the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, so the faith of Christ, the righteousness which is of God by faith, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings being made conformable to his death, if by any means I might attain unto the resurrection of the dead. Not as though, and here's the pressing on now, not as though I had already attained, either were already perfect, mature, complete, ripe, but I follow after, if that I may apprehend, that for which also I am apprehended of Christ Jesus. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before I press I press on toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. Ah, let's just pause and consider that for a minute. That I might be found in him. Follow after, lay hold of. But I press on, I press on. Ah, amen. Pressing on. Wonderful. Let's go back to Hebrews now. Uh, Hebrews um, 13, I think, is where I want to go. Let me look. Yeah. Let's pick up in thir Hebrews 13. Now, it begins with, after our God is a consuming fire, let brotherly love continue. Amen. But let's go, let's jump all the way to, uh, let's see, 13. 
just want to get the flow here then. Let us go forth therefore unto him outside the camp, bearing his reproach. For here we have no continuing city, but we seek one to come. By him, therefore, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. That is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. Continually, the continual burnt offering, the continual sacrifice of thanksgiving and praise. But to do good and to share, like to communicate, is to share, forget not, for with such sacrifices, God is well pleased. And now let me jump to verse 20, if you'll follow along. Now the God of peace that brought again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever again there's that well pleasing this is a this is a life of faith that just lived by faith. this is now faith the substance of things hoped for well pleasing in his sight to whom be glory forever and ever amen Amen and amen. So that's our pilgrim journey. Now, I may have shared once with you, uh, but uh, th this past summer, I, I went along, I followed the Santa Fe Trail from Independence, Missouri to Santa Fe, New Mexico. And that's where uh, traders, uh, it was the original trail west, and then you got the California Trail and the Oregon Trail. Um, and it was nice following uh, these. You had to drive off, but there, there's uh, it's, 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 it's a national trail now, National Park Service Trail, and there's, there's an app, and you could follow, find places where there were crossings, and there's markers and commemorative plaques and all sorts, very interesting. Uh, and along... Along the way, uh, at some point, the Daughters of the American Revolution set stone pillars. And there may have been stone pillars to mark the way then, but I think this came later. But stone pillars, kind of like guideposts, uh, uh, to, to uh, mark the trail so you don't lose your way, right? Well, the Lord says, my sheep hear my voice, and they follow me, and they don't listen to the voice of a stranger. So, Lord, give us the grace to have ears to hear. And just not listen to voice of stranger and follow him, but guideposts and and what he does speak. And um, I have a whole list of guideposts that I want to give you that are along. Uh, I find them along the trail. I share these with my students. I, I uh, together with them, uh, we learn how to read the Bible and find nourishment in the Bible. It's, it's called Bible. I teach 10th, 11th, and 12th graders Bible. I get to do that at this stage of my life. And we have these glorious times together. Amen. But I give them these guideposts. And I wanted to share some of them with you because what struck me when, as I was coming back from Santa Fe, I said, oh, isn't this interesting? It's from Independence. Now, folks, that's the nethermost pit, Independence. That was me, <laughs> an elitist, independent. I've got my life, you know. I'm all wrapped up in myself. All the way to Santa Fe, which if you know the Espanol, Santa Fe is, fe is faith. So holy faith or living faith. Guys, our walk to the city of the living God is a walk away from independence, absolute dependence on him, listening for his voice. Amen. Into holy, living faith. The just shall live by faith. So here, I'm going to give you, I'm going to read, you may, if you want to uh, write them down, or if you don't want to, and if you'd like to get the guideposts that I'm giving you, <laughs> email Pete, I'll send him a copy of these. But there's a progression here too. 
Uh, oh, and speaking of progression, sometimes in the Psalms, I see them all the time, but I just saw it here in the Hebrew letter as it went on to James. What's the opening? Of James? It's all about, you know, we talk, you know, pressing on and patient endurance. And what's the, what are the opening lines of James's letter there? It's like, okay, it's like the Lord as the scriptures were put together. He said, okay, don't lose sight of this, folks. What does he say? He says, it's the same word, hupomone, knowing this, that, that the trying of your faith, this is verse 3, chapter 1, that the trying of your faith worketh, what? Hupomone, patient endurance, a pressing on, a facing the challenges and going through on your way to the heavenly city as God does his sanctifying work in your life. Amen. And even, uh, what, but let patience, there's verse 4. It's, it's so the Lord. I mean, this is James. James didn't write the letter to the Hebrews. Uh, and I just smile all the time when I see these connections. But let patience have her hupomone. Let that patient endurance have her perfect work that you may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. And we had those same words in the Hebrew letter. Perfect, mature, complete, fruitful, bearing fruit. All right, here you go. Psalm 84.4. These are guideposts. If, you, if you're walking the way, you know, I don't know, none of you, I might have mentioned this before. I know I did to others. But uh, in the old days, when we drive from Phoenix, Arizona to Santa Monica, California, where I was born, on the highways, there would be Burma shave signs. And there'd be about six signs, and each of them would have a word or two and as you follow along, you get a whole sentence, and the very end would be Burma shave. I think that was that was shaving uh, cream. And they were all, and as kids, we always loved them. Well, that's kind of what these are, walking along <laughs> this pilgrim's way. The opening uh, one is from 84.4, Psalm 84.4. Happy are the people whose strength is in you, whose hearts are set on the pilgrim's way. Pilgrim's Way, that's what we are, folks, just moving on, pressing on. Not that I've already attained, but I press on. I press on. I press on. Amen. And then this, as you keep pressing on, then you're going to say, and you're getting a little weary or you're wondering, you know, then another little marker pops up. And, and they're little like stone obelisks. I, I, I really regret. I meant to bring one, a small one. You see them along the trail, uh, these markers of the trail. They're out of stone. They're about that big square, and they're about maybe four feet high, and they're marking the trail. But um, this marker, as you, as, as you set out along the Pilgrim's Way, just be reminded of this. From Matthew 23.10, you have one teacher, even the Christ. Amen. He speaks in listening to his voice, new life the dead receive. We have one teacher. We have many who can preach and teach. It's true, but it's, we trust it's Christ, the Spirit of Christ speaking to us. One teacher, even the Christ. And um, what's our response? Well, what was the response of Samuel back there in the Old Testament? And when he went to Eli and said, hey, you called me. And Eli finally figured out that it, it, Samuel was hearing the Lord's voice. And Eli instructed him to say, speak, for your, speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. That's 1 Samuel 3.10. You may remember the story, beautiful story. Three times it happens. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. Oh, to have a listening ear, right? To have the ear of faith. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. In fact, that's another uh, milepost along the way, guideposts, along the, the stone pillars along this pilgrim's way. Um, and then this one from Mark 10, uh, verse 49. This is blind Bartimaeus. I think, I'm pretty sure it's blind Bartimaeus, as I recall. I'm just lifting it out. Uh, I've got to set aside as a marker, a pillar along the way. But 
speak. No, no, no. Take heart. The disciples are saying to blind Bartimaeus, take heart, rise, he is calling you. He speaks. He calls. Amen. And then, um, so then from Paul's letter, Romans 10, you're still walking this pilgrim's way. And uh, you're going along. Oh, there's another marker. Uh, maybe you also, yeah, the, the Burma shave, you know, one after another. But here it is. Um, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Okay, take heart. He's calling you. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. These grow and develop. Uh, that's uh, Romans 10, verse 17. And then um, this from 1 John 2, 24. And on this uh, little stone pillar along uh, the pilgrim's way, I think we would just have to have uh, the reference, 1 John 2, 24, because it's a little longer. But listen to this. Let that therefore abide in you, which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you have heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you shall also continue in the Son and in the Father. Faith comes by hearing. Let that which you heard from the beginning abide in you as you press on in him. Um, amen. I think I'm going to jump over uh, my own personal words like that, but um, Jeremiah fifteen sixteen, uh, God spoke to this me this early on, and uh, it's been my walk since early, early on. Um, it's in Jeremiah fifteen verse sixteen, another little guidepost, a stone pillar along the way. I found thy words and did eat them. And thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart, for I am called by thy name, O Lord, God of hosts. I found thy words and did eat them and inwardly digest them. And thy word was unto me the, thy word, words becoming word as you feed on him. And by his grace, words, the written word becomes word in you. And your, my, thy word was unto me the joy and rejoicing of my heart. And so, oh, I didn't, I don't think I gave you John 1, 2, 24. Let me read that to you. Let that therefore abide in you which you have heard from the beginning. If that which you've heard from the beginning shall remain in you, you also shall continue in the Son and in the Father. what you have heard from the beginning. Faith comes by hearing, hearing by the word of God. And just a couple more for you. Uh, from John 16, 13, these are markers along the pilgrim's way, little stone pillars. The Holy Spirit will lead us into all truth. How about that reminder? That's good. And then from John 17, 17, sanctify them in thy truth. Sanctify them in the truth. Thy word is truth. And finally, and this is a prayer. This is a, Thomas Cranmer's prayer. I really like it. it. It shows up in different places. It shows up in the Anglican Book of Common Prayer. But here it is. Help us to hear, read, mark, learn, and inwardly digest. Inwardly di Help us to hear and inwardly digest your holy word. To feed on God's word. And so we close is markers along the way. Give us this day our daily bread. We might feed on him. Amen. 
Amen. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your word. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth. Thank you, Father, for who you are, for drawing us to you, for drawing us along the pilgrim way. From the nethermost pit to Mount Zion and the city of the living God and the heavenly Jerusalem. Lord, we just want to rest in you now and pray that you would continue to draw us on into all the fullness of life that you have for each one of us. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm pressing on the upward way New heights I'm gaining every day Still praying and I'm onward bound Lord, plant my feet on higher ground Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, where love and joy and light abound. Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. My heart has no desire to stay. Where doubts arise and fears dismay Though some may dwell where these abound My prayer, my aim is higher ground Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, when love and joy and light abound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. I long to scale the utmost height Though rough the way and hard the fight, my song while climbing shall resound. Lord, lead me on to higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand. By faith on heaven's table land, when love and joy and light abound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, lead me up the mountain side. I dare not climb without my guide And heaven gain I'll gaze around With grateful heart from higher ground Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven's table land, when love and joy and light abound, Lord, plant my feet on higher ground. Lord, 
Lead me up the mountain side. I dare not climb without my guide. And heaven gain, I'll gaze around with grateful heart from higher ground. Lord, lift me up and let me stand by faith on heaven table land when love and joy and light abound Lord plant my feet on higher 